lead up, but look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind. It was basically a cube with inside of a sphere where the points of the cube uh, were touching outside of the sphere. So this isn't anything that just is limited to the United States. It's a worldwide phenomenon. That UFO podcast is powered by Zencaster. Zencaster is one of the world's leading platforms for recording and hosting podcasts. Zencaster is a modern web-based solution for high-quality audio and video podcast production. With a full suite of professional tools, Zencaster allows podcasters to quickly and seamlessly record their guests remotely and produce their podcasts in studio quality. Check out the links in the show description to find out more. Hi everyone and welcome back to That UFO Podcast. We have a breaking news update. Been a few weeks since we've done one of these, so looking forward to getting right into it. Dan joining me as usual for this one. How are we doing today, Dan? I'm great. It's a it's a good day today. I'm very aware. I've just said, how are we doing today, Dan? Very quickly. And with so many people telling me that they're struggling with my accent, I should probably clear up. I've just said to Dan, how are you doing today? Because in my accent, that's probably like do 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 do. Is do all we need a, a translator on the podcast? Is that probably? Um, I'll have to start doing my accents again, won't I? <laughs> uh, speaking of accents, Ross Coulthard, uh, obviously, thank you to everyone who got in touch about part one, or if you listened or, or tried to listen to it. Um, it the feedback's been incredible. Um, the reaction to it's been great. Thanks to people sharing it on on Reddit, on their own YouTube channels and crediting the podcast. That's always appreciated. Um, and if you're just talking about it with people or you just got some information or entertainment from it, then fantastic. Um, Ross was great. Part two is available right now we record this today on friday the 24th of september it's available on patreon.com early access with no adverts whatsoever and it's also on apple premium subscriptions it's like 199 uk or like two dollars 49 i think um and then just whatever it is on your own currency per month but you do get a two-week free trial on that as well and it comes to us and supports the podcast and helps us do this as much as we have been doing it which which is greatly appreciated as well so so yeah dan do you want to thank everyone yeah absolutely it, it's okay been thanks crazy That's, seeing yeah. uh, <laughs> it's been crazy seeing the responses on you know because i read it and we're always on social media and people have responded really positively to it um which is which is nice uh kurt jimangal uh sent an email just to let us know that he'd be interviewing ross and and asking if there was anything that ross talked to us about that he could follow up on so it's i i love that when the community kind of comes together to make sure that we're you, you know we're asking a nice breadth of questions um and i think that interview it could, did it last night but it'll be up in a in a few days for for people to watch sorry dan you're talking but i'm only hearing it come through my left ear um i don't I <laughs> oh don't yeah know should why I, that is. Is, is this uh where i publicly apologize for the oh. audio issue on the on the youtube of the, just the left ear was that you that made that mistake oh hey, okay. you know what if you plug in two pairs of headphones and you rotate one pair of headphones you can technically have stereo <laughs> or if you buy another set of speakers and just have two left ones side by <laughs> side it'll sound stereo maybe yeah sorry about that when i convert video i, I just have to t hit one tick box and i i forgot but it's fixed for part two i promise yeah you literally cannot get the staff um, <laughs> yeah part two like i say out now on premium uh, which is great so you'll have that over the weekend to listen to early feedback from it again has been fantastic so thank you everyone who's incredibly incredibly nice about it and if you don't enjoy it please still get in touch and tell us why if you want to talk about it get in touch and you want to discuss it share your thoughts and opinions do all of that we're, we're not precious about someone not liking something we do but it's great because th there hasn't been anyone said anything negative at all about the the ross part one so that's incredible so thank you everyone um look forward to that coming out on monday on all the free feeds so that's monday the 27th of september it will be accessible to all um we, we should also say here that we're gonna um with the youtube we're gonna just leave a little bit of space after it goes up onto the podcast um and that'll enable andy and i to kind of talk with a lot of people who listen and then we can do live chats when the youtube goes up with you guys yeah spot on and the youtube stuff is a lot more work as well again this 
neither of us do this full time for a job. It takes up almost all of our spare time. Um, so things like chapters and breaking down the, the interviews and all that kind of stuff it is a lot more work than people potentially realize but that's not your problem that's our problem and that's that's where we're at so we're we're trying to get all that stuff up to scratch as best we can and that's why we've been doing things like the the youtube tests recently um and obviously we we made mention first time we can mention it on air that from the first week in october we will have a new show it'll be that ufo podcast the other show debuting on kgra radio can can i ask what, what do you mean by the other show is there potentially a play on words there no, it's just it's just the other show we do. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the the other show uh, being a little bit of a play on you know the others and other entities and other beings. So um, it was funny when I first spoke to the the guys from KGRA who reached out to us to maybe do something with them. Um, I had no idea what to call it, and they asked me, "So have you thought of a snappy title?" And I, only minutes before. I hope they don't listen to this. Only minutes before I got on the call with them, I wrote down the other show. And I was like, uh, yeah, so it's going to be that UFO podcast, the other show. And I've never seen a look of such underwhelmment from the guy who was obviously really keen and excited to to have us do something for them. And he was like, remember, it's got to be snappy. And, you know, you're, what, and I was, what was like, he expecting? Like Super Explosion 3000 with that UFO podcast? He didn't go for that one. <laughs> um, but w- when I said to him, because we were on a video call, well, it's called the other show because you know other beings and ent- and I explained to him, and you could just see his face and the smile. And then one of the other his other colleagues who were on the call went, "Ah, I like it. Yeah, I like that. That's good." So that's why it's called the other show. And also, it is the other show. Um, it's an extension of what we do. It's going to be original content. Um, there'll be news and news updates. We might do some interview stuff on there as well. It's going to be a shorter form show. Um, by the time you've got the intros and outros and all that kind of stuff, you're you're looking at forty odd minutes of content on there. So we're hoping to make it snappy, uh, segment based, um, with some video content and and stuff as well. So we've got a lot of cool stuff, and we want to get hopefully as many of you as possible watching that show on KGRA as well. It'll be a video format which people are telling us they like, and it'll will hopefully give you something a little bit different to to what we've been doing anyway. So we don't plan on. Do you know what? I'll be really honest. If we can't make something that we enjoy doing and other people enjoy doing and is original, then we won't do it. And KGRA are aware of that. And, you know, they want they want good content. And I don't think we've ever put anything out that's half-assed or half-assed, depending on how you're listening to this. Unless you're Dan and you only put out half the audio, in which case that, <laughs> yeah, these things happen. It's it's a nine ninety nine super chat for the other year. That's... <laughs> Yeah, that that's that's Dan's way of making the money on it. <laughs> um, but listen, the, like we say, the it's it's a it's a new show, so we're looking forward to doing it, and you'll hear more about that soon and, and the format and stuff as well. Uh, Dan, listen, uh, some big news did uh, come out, which we're excited about, but I wasn't as excited as some of the guys in the UAP media chat. Sure, um, I, I was clicking my heels together like uh, Dorothy, right? Like I, I was super happy about it. But only because I've seen people jump on with the, well, the House bill has passed with the NDAA. Potentially, we're getting that UFO office, but it's not 100% definitely happening. We can't say that yet. Is that right, Dan? Yeah. So with the American system, basically, the, the committees come up with the bills, and then they go to Congress, and they're voted on, and then they go to the House, and they're voted on, and then they go to the president's desk to be signed into law. And all throughout those stages, things can change, things can get reworded. We already know that it's not just the NDAA that has UAP language in it. Um, there's another bill too. So what's likely to happen is, you know, they like to be efficient, is that those two bills are probably going to get smushed together and become something else. Um, the Senate is taking up a different NDAA uh, with a few different details and stuff like that. And that one is uh, S2792, but it's a really good example of how things are changing, right? So the bill that we had, HR 4350, is that 2792. That's the one to keep your eye on now. Um, But eventually, the UAP language from both of those bills will be smushed together and put into this one bill for passage. Awesome. So where we are at is this bill gives us the potential to have that permanent UAP UFO office. Right now, we're in a good place. It's passed, but it still needs that final sign-off. So what yeah. we're hoping worst case scenario would be is that some of the language or 
objectives would change, but the the whole the idea in essence would go ahead that we're going to get that office. Um, we yeah, don't I'd say think so. it should be falling down at this point. No, I mean, the, there's two bills, you know, it, it's not coming from one direction this year, it's coming from two. Um, and Tim McMillan was saying that uh, the the committee, uh, Armed Services Committee, I think it is, that produced this bill, they've actually been very active behind the scenes for the past few years, we just haven't been hearing about it. So basically, you kind of have this pincer movement going on. Um, it's going to go through, it's just being picky about language now. Yeah, and, and do you know what, I think we have kind of said this before, and this is where people have to realise that this this isn't stuff that's happened over the last couple of months. This isn't because, you know, we, we, we talk about how far behind we are in the UK. These conversations have been happening in the corridors of power, I believe is normally the, the phrase people like to use, for some time now. This is stuff that when you hear or don't hear from Lou Elizondo and Chris Mellon, and and those folks that we know are heavily involved in this movement behind the scenes, this stuff is going on. These conversations don't just happen overnight. Things aren't just put in a bill on a whim, um, short of a pandemic and something having to be drafted. This is stuff that is a build up and stuff that's happened over time. And what, as a community, we are able to influence is keeping it in the limelight and drumming up enough noise that it does end up on the news and we do get more articles about it. Uh, and just to follow on from that then, I think, Dan, just to segue in, is that we are now seeing credible journalists like Ross Coulthart and like we're about to discuss, Ralph Blumenthal, who has been involved in this, keeping the baton going and carrying the conversation forward. Uh, today, again, as we speak, the 24th of September, uh, Ralph Blumenthal has um, written an, an article for The Debrief, which has only really been published a couple of hours ago, which is which is great. It's Ralph is going to be on the podcast again on Wednesday. Um, we're going to talk about some of the contents of the article. I won't go through it in full with Dan because the work is the debriefs and it's Ralph Blumenthal. So we'll we'll retweet it and it's online already. Check out any of the debrief team stuff, the debrief page, the debrief website, which is I'll just double check it. Yeah, the debrief.org and you'll see it's all on the home page. So please go and check out that article. Um we won't be, you know, spoiling it too much, hopefully just having a, a brief discussion. And then when Ralph is on the podcast on Wednesday, we'll be talking through some of that with him and why he's still pursuing this, and which is great because we do appreciate it. Dan, what were your, your thoughts then immediately on the, the article itself? I, I thought it was great. Um, you know, we, we throw a lot of words around in the community and the experiencer is one of them. Um, you know, some people, when they have a site in, they call it an experience. Other people have to be taken to be able to call it an experience you know um so i think it was it was a really nice article to kind of say okay this is this is what we're referring to when we say experience so let, let's start kind of using these terms in a in an accessible way um the article also spoke about john john mack who you know if you're listening to this you you probably know but he was a a, a head of harvard i want to say is that right uh the psychology department um I apologize uh, you know what, if I'm the, mistaken on that. But the only reason, Dan, that I paused and never responded was just at the exact second you were about to ask me whatever it was you asked, you froze. So people <laughs> will hear the audio of what you said just because of how we record. But all I got back was you pausing, waiting on me responding, and me going. So, <laughs> so what was it you no, said? That's all good. Um, John Max positions. It slips my mind. Um, but basically, he did a lot of work with uh, experiences, um, <clears throat> and he kind of set the bar. His employer, um, a big university, did not, you know, fire him or discipline him or kind of say that he was doing asking leading questions or anything like that. So he he got a lot of data built up about similarities through different people's experiences in different parts of the world. Um, very 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 interesting stuff. Ralph actually wrote a book about him um, called The Believer, I think, and yeah. uh, I recommend picking that up because it'll it'll he, kind of fill some gaps in. He was the head of the psychiatry department for Harvard University, which is no mean feat. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, just before we get into the article, um, I interviewed Ralph a few months ago, and that was the topic of the interview. Was his book John Mack, the Believer, and it's all about the you know those types of experiences, and it very much seems Ralph is carrying on the conversation, which I think a lot of people will appreciate. So go and check out the Ralph Blumenthal interview if you haven't already. It should be on audio and YouTube. 
it's really interesting, Ralph, is keeping this going. And at a time where I've seen a lot of conversation on social media from people who who say or label themselves as experiencers, and like Dan says, that's because they have seen something or they have physically experienced something, or it's not always physical, it can be kind of non-physical, but I've seen a lot of frustration from experiencers that their, their story or what hap- what is happening to them isn't being shouted about more or it's not at the forefront of the conversation. And I've said before, I have all the respect in the world for anyone who wants to share. I saw a light in the sky and it was moving along really fast. Don't know what it was. Or if you want to tell that you have been, you know, taken on board a craft of some kind, or if you've had repeated experiences over the years, physically or not, if you're having really intense dreams where strange beings are coming into them, no one, especially on this podcast, like many others, is going to ridicule or make fun of those. And I would encourage people to share their experiences if they can on any platform, any podcast, you know, because you deserve that that chance to do that. I still don't think we're anywhere near, and I've said this before, the, the conversation on a mainstream level to be talking about abductions and experiencers because it's far too much of a step. If we're if we're going from A to B to C, that's like going from A to B to W or X. And it's not that it's not important, it's just it's not the time yet. Because in so much of the conversation, what the conversation we have right now and, and you listening to this podcast, you've no doubt already got an interest in the subject and have some kind of knowledge or background or even if you're new to it you're you're ready or willing to have that conversation the conversation that's being had in that bigger stage by your Ralph Blumenthal's or Ross Coulthart's or Luis Elizondo's it's very difficult for them to go to a newspaper or a news network and get something put on air or published which talks about even crash retrieval programs or abduction experiences because the stigma just comes right back into the conversation is that fair dan yeah i think so i think it's fair um as you i I, we spoke just before this and and andy was asking me what i thought of the article as i was going through and i I was saying to him that there were a lot of things that i read in the article that have happened to me and i kind of had this you know this kind of stomach turn that i was reading it realizing that at some point all the experiences are going to, we're, we're all going to have to be brave and just hope that no one burns us at the stake. You know, like you said, you can't go from B to W. Um, but I feel like it's a big jump whenever it comes. Um, just because the implications of it are huge, you know, to be able to look people in the face and be like, yeah, things come from somewhere and take women out of their beds and take their eggs and inseminate them and show them their kids. And like, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. And and we don't want to share the stories which are within the body of the article. Please go and check those out and we'll speak uh, to Ralph next week in more detail about them too. Um, One thing I will pick up on within the body of the article is it references celebrities, pop culture, talks about Kendrick Lamar, Howard Stern, Demi Lovato, and then mentions other celebrities in the past who have had famous UFO sightings and such. Uh, Muhammad Ali famously did, you know, John Lennon, Jimi Hendrix and, and a whole host of others. Um, I'm always a little bit on the fence, especially, for example, this this Demi Lovato show. We've had, there was a lot of hype behind the J.J. Abrams documentaries and they, they fell pretty flat, I think it's fair to say, for what we were hoping and what we were expecting. Um, and let's be honest, given that platform and a serious filmmaker like that or documentary maker, it didn't have the impact we were hoping it was going to because it felt like it was on the on the downward curve of where we were kind of riding that wave onto the UEP task force report and everything like that. And then it maybe came just a little bit too late, but even then a a lot of people seem to agree that the second half of the, the documentaries went a little bit outside the realms of what we wanted it to sound like and what it wanted it to look like, which I think is in keeping with what everyone thought. I then see Demi Lovato who, you know, pop singer, has had a lot of issues with various things in her past which you know all the luck in the world in dealing with those but is that the right person to be taking this forward tom delong gets enough abuse because of who he was in blink 182 and his character and persona 
without bringing it into 2021. The, 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 the one argument which may outweigh everything is Demi Lovato is very much a major celebrity now and she's got a huge following. But are they necessarily going to watch that and think, well, I'm really into UFOs? Or are they watching just a Demi Lovato reality TV series? So so I have a good little anecdote about this kind of stuff. Um, Go on. My sister couldn't give a flying bleep bleep um, about... A, fl- a flying Ross Coulthard. Yeah. A flying Ross Coulthard <laughs> um, about uh, UAP. And a few months back, they they had a Kardashian episode that kind of centered around it. And it was Preston Dennett that they went and spoke to. I was worried that they were going to speak to Greer or someone, but no, they spoke to Preston. And, you know, on, on a balance, he, he's one of the better people, I would say. Um, and he kind of took them to Catalina and they, you, you know, they looked out and saw some strange lights and things like that. Um, nothing crazy was said in the show. I mean, relatively, you know. Um, but to this day, Almost once a week, I'll get a text from my sister saying what's happening with this UAP stuff just because of that show. And there was a lot in there where I was like, oh, you know, kind of ignore this bit and take this bit. But I think it stands to inspire a lot of people. And as we go forward, this subject is going to open right up. So, you know, we need to get used to people we don't necessarily align with talking about it Um, because we, I just we can't control them. What we can control is how we speak about it. Um, and we can try and put our best foot forward, you know? Demi Lovato hangs about with Stephen Greer. Does she pay for the privilege? <laughs> Do you know what? I bet she does, but the money's not exactly an object to her, so that's like, that's nothing. Um, I, so I, I, I get the arguments that people will put forward that she's young, uh, sorry, they are young, pronouns, um, and people may not be aware of Demi Lovato's background and stuff and, and our past and history, but that's that's not what this podcast's about. Um Demi Lovato uh has had, you know, a few experiences with Stephen Greer. Um their friends are involved as well in this. There's the argument that of course millions of people are going to watch this, but I just think almost all of those millions are going to be watching a Demi Lovato reality TV series about someone whose who's UFO experiences very much are shaped by Stephen Greer. And that worries me slightly. And there's still potential for every... Yeah, but for if 100,000 people watch it and one person gets involved in the subject seriously, that's great. But potentially you get a lot of people involved in the subject in a way that we don't want to be involved in it. That they, they come into it and, and, and take things back a step when you want the conversation to keep progressing forward. And I don't know. We're, we're going to have to wait and see, but I just look at it and think people have jumped on the bandwagon after the UAP task force report. If the JJ Abrams documentaries weren't going to be a a turning point, then I don't think I don't think these are going to help necessarily either. For me, the Ross Coulterts of the world, uh, the Ralph Blumenthal's, Leslie Keens are, are making a difference in the mainstream. But do you know what? I think I, I've got to admit I've got a bias that I hate reality TV programs, and I just I can t- I just know what this is going to be like in tone and stuff already. So is is this the, the there was a point in my life where people kept showing me stuff and I kept not liking it and and, and you know I got quite judgy and after a while I realized hold on it, it's it's not that it's bad it's just not for me you know. Um, so I'll stick with you know the Roscoe books and stuff like that, but. I'm not going to be following Demi Lovato kind of teaching people about UAP or maybe I will actually just in in terms of being informed about it so I can have an opinion but I I don't think she's gonna you know there's anything she can say that's gonna make them for example scrap those bills that are going through Congress. Um, Dan did you ever see from a UK point of view Danny Dyer on UFOs? uh, I didn't because I'm not a big fan of Danny Dyer but go on. This this is going to be that. Oh right okay yeah. And And probably less less positive so yeah i i'm not hopeful i hope i'm wrong but we shall see we shall see but um yeah so the article itself please check that out on the debrief.org uh, ralph blumenthal doing some great work and you can look out for that podcast dropping um hopefully we'll, we'll get that straight out next wednesday evening uk time that's when it's being recorded as well and we'll we'll we try and get that one straight up on youtube as soon as we can as well dan yeah for sure if I ask Dan um, while we're recording, he has to say yes because he's now he's put himself on the I spot. I always say yes on air, but there's like a little <laughs> sign up that you guys can't see that just says no. <laughs> Unless you're watching this on YouTube. 
uh, and in which case you will see Dan doesn't have a sign. <laughs> no, there's no sign. I've 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 cowed my I've cancelled my plans. I'll, I'll get it done. <laughs> Actually, that's that's not true. You do have a sign where you held your hand up and it says that UFO podcast. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, yeah. Please check that out. And many thanks to Ralph Blumenthal and the team over at the DB for getting that out. Folks, we're halfway through. Um, just before I get to one of the sponsors and read a quick ad, when we come back from that, we are going to be discussing Anjali's recent tweet and how things may have changed and, and that whole um, um, thing. I'm going to use the word, like I don't thing. know what to call it at the minute. Yeah, <laughs> potential excursion, which is, is taking a bit of a turn. And then also uh, we're going to be discussing the recent civilian space shuttle trip as well that was sent over as a question from Brian Lemery, who's one of the patrons of the podcast. Uh, and of course, it's going to be to do with UAP. So stick around and we'll be back for that in just a second. <laughs> going to pay some bills now and head over and talk about our sponsor manscaped autumn is in the air folks the pumpkins are in the patch and our friends at manscaped are here to make sure you don't carve your pants pumpkins when you're grooming if you know what i'm saying make sure you're keeping things fresh this fall with the leaders in male grooming and their brand new fourth generation performance package quite a few of you have already got in touch sharing how impressed you are not only with your 20 percent off and free shipping with promo code andy ufo but with the quality of the products themselves so if you're ready to take the leap into fall with manscaped join the two million men worldwide using manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20 percent off and free shipping with the code andy ufo and not only that you support myself and dan isn't that right dan sorry i was on a i was on mute it, it helps hide the noise of the weed whacker these things are great yeah D- dan's got his stuff as well and he is smiling from ear to ear um if you've ever groomed your own personal area 51 you know even the most advanced tech can malfunction that is not an issue with the lawnmower 4.0 included in the new performance package 4.0 inside this package you'll find their lawnmower 4.0 trimmer weed whacker ear and nose hair trimmer crop preserver ball deodorant crop reviver toner performance boxer briefs and a travel bag to hold all of your goodies now you can fit all of that in there and some more just like doctor who's tardis on the inside i would say their fourth generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology and it also gives you the ability to turn the 4000k led spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave plus it's waterproof and if you find yourself out in skinwalker ranch in the middle of the night and you don't have a torch to work your way through the ranch then it works really really good for that kind of stuff as well i can promise you i don't want to camp out in skinwalker ranch but we know dan does listen get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code andy ufo at manscape.com that's 20 percent off and free shipping with the promo code andy ufo support myself support dan support the podcast make your balls a priority this fall choose manscaped your tic tacs will thank you moving on uh anjali uh, as we know who held the press conference can we call it a press conference a few weeks ago outside of the monument in washington um discussing potential location of a uh, alien alien beings in a mountain in the Mojave Desert, and there was going to be an expedition, and it's all been covered in ad nauseum. I know I had said Anjali was going to come on the podcast. I think people saw that she very publicly said she would come on when when one of the listeners had asked, um, but I, I never got any replies to my DMs or, or further messages, so I just left it where it was, folks, because I, I'm not the type to chase and chase and chase. If, if someone's not looking to come on, that's absolutely their, their right, and, and I respect that completely. Um However, as as some expected, and I think I said so at the time as well, there was a way I expected this whole thing to go. And just the other day, Anjali replied to a tweet online saying that the the base no longer appeared to be a physical location and was more than likely dimensional. And I, I, do you know what? I'm going to tell you, I've wrote on my notes here, sigh, yeah. And it's like, is this just not the issue where... And I know people were very protective and let's not abuse and no one should and let's not be really negative because this could be great. And of course, and we always say what would real look like and there's no reason that there is that one person somewhere in the world who is having contact uh, contact with beings like that in a base somewhere and they're being taken there. But to come out the way it was done 
never seemed the best idea in the first place and now it just seems the back the backtracking is starting i'm a little disappointed but i am entirely 100 percent not surprised dan uh, what about yourself i i'm just gonna say it like i'm i'm done with this whole anjali thing we like you say we expected it to go one way um and it's going that way. And I, I know we always talk about accepting stories and things like that, but I want to emphasize here, you know, I'll often talk about spinning plates of unknowns because we we just don't know which kind of box to put them in. Those spinning plates of unknown, like this one, are completely useless. They're useless. We're chasing our tails. It's noise. She's going to keep moving the goalposts. And you know what? If she comes back with a body or something, fine, surprise me. But there are more positive things going on in the world. And especially when we've got this article from Ralph coming out talking about genuine, you know, trauma victims. And and to think that someone could be trying to take advantage of that for fame, that's disgusting, man. That's just disgusting. It's it's the worst of the community. And you know what? We don't again, we always caveat it, don't we, with we don't know, but it's just you, to come out and say one thing and then it totally changes and that's the way the story seems to go um we never found out who was going to be on the expedition some high profile people like george knapp and co were quite happy to go along i'm sure they're again they had their own suspicions but journalistic integrity and all that kind of stuff kicks in and there's a story there especially in the ufo community it was it was pretty big but straight away this is just a huge red flag for me um a few people asked us to discuss it and do you know what i don't think there's a whole lot more we can say on it I think we called this from the start, and it's one of those ones I would love to have been wrong on, even for them to have gone on the expedition and and had something from it. It was, wasn't even expecting to, them to walk into the Mojave Desert, into some mountain, and find a whole load of mantises sitting around a table having something to eat. Definitely not what I was expecting, but ju- just for something to have come of it that made us go, I wonder, or what if, or wouldn't it be interesting and already it just seems like it's it's going to fall flat on its face, which is really disappointing. But again, it's just one of those knocks that you take in this community now and again, and you just have to dust yourself off and, and move on to the next one. Any, anything more to add on it, Dan? No, no. Just like you say, it's disappointing. There are people out there with genuine experiences. The There are crazy things going on, really important things we need to discuss. And then we have this stranger pontificating from the steps in Washington, D.C. and changing the story every two minutes. Just, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm done with it. I know people won't see it on YouTube because the YouTube video for this one, just to get it up quickly, is going to be just the thumbnail with some stuff. But I've got the UCR um, hoodie on. So thank you, Luis Jimenez and Co. Uh, I bought that from them. It's uh, awesome. Jazz Shaw's I can see the dolphin, dolphin in the TikTok there. And this will do me well in the winter. I, I'm not going to lie. I think it's a bad day for me to be wearing this because it's uh, 20 degrees outside. So it's pretty warm in the recording studio. I could call it a studio. Feel the dedication, Luis, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Luis, I have made an effort and I'm sure you'll be listening to this at some point to to have this on, but it was a bad choice in the heat I am in right now. But I, I, when I said to Luis I was going to pick one up, um, I, I did say it's going to be great for the winter. So I've bought like a big baggy version of it as well. So um, rocking that for you guys. Thank you. Uh, and I want to move on to discuss the recent SpaceX launch of the first civilians in space. Um, four new astronauts were launched into space, all with varying stories and backgrounds. Um, I think just demonstrating how Elon Musk and SpaceX have made space exploration. Oh, SpaceX, that's what it's called that. Um, made space <laughs> exploration. <laughs> I knew that. Um, so simple and accessible to people. Obviously, right now, there would be a huge price on people buying tickets, as in when the commercial side of this launches. But Brian Lemery, who is one of the Patreon, sent me a massive message um, the other day just with some thoughts on it. And he said he would like to hear it discussed on the show. And do you know what? I thought it was a good place to bring it up. Um, And Brian was basically wondering, with civilians going into space, and we may have touched on this in some of our, some of our earlier shows, Dan, how, what does this mean for UFOs and UAP? Because if you are just launching, and I think when we did discuss it previously, we talked about, you know, your Kanye Wests of the world and Demi Lovato is going to have a huge interest in this. And if you're going to send those celebrities on Jeff Bezos' shuttle or Richard Branson's Virgin Galactic stuff or Elon Musk's SpaceX, are they I, signing I will NDA? Say that 
only one of those three things you just mentioned actually goes to space. Screw those other two at, guys. At the moment, <laughs> yeah, at the moment, if you're talking about what is actual space, yeah, the other ones just go really, really high. Um, so let's not talk anymore about getting really, really high, Dan. The, uh, th- those, those shuttles, though, the idea is eventually they'll be used for commercial space flight to and from the moon, to and from space hotels, just to and from space for a trip round the round orbit and back. Um, do, and Brian was asking, are people signing NDAs for this? Basically getting at, if you send up any number of civilians or celebrities into space and they see stuff, which we would be assuming they will or would, what's the deal with that? Because if you're the government and you've got a space force, and you have a UAP office and all of that jazz, and you've been keeping this secret for 80 years, and all of a sudden Kanye West is live streaming on TikTok, if that's how that works. I've just maybe just massively aged myself. But if if you're Kanye or you're Kim Kardashian or any of that lot, and, and you're up there and you've got a signal and, and you're potentially filming UAP, that's huge. I mean, game-changing. I, I would love that. But I would love to watch Demi Lovato live in space, you know, filming. That would be awesome because you never know what you might see. Um, I've just inadvertently used the show's catchphrase there. I'd never know what you might see if you keep looking up. If you're <laughs> up there already looking down, then again, yeah. So, Dan, what do you think about that? Do you think there's any conversations that do happen with civilians before they go into space? Probably. I mean, there's going to be a lot of technological stuff on those rockets that they wouldn't be able to discuss in in the event that, you know, competitors might copy them. Um, so at that level, they'll, they'll have an NDA there. Um, and really, when you think about it, the data pipe coming down from that SpaceX rocket is going through a command center where they would have control of exactly what everyone is seeing. You know, the, the people aren't just tweeting from space, they're sending the data down and the people on the ground are tweeting, look what they're doing in space. Um, <clears throat> so it's, yeah, I, I, I think they've, for now, they maintain that kind of control of the pipe if they need it. Um, but we, we've definitely spoken about whether private industry going to space more and civilians starting to go to space is a reason for all of this kind of starting. You know, I think it may be one of several kind of facets that that have made this kind of, you know, the starting gun go off at disclosure. What do you think the chances are? Bear in mind, it's a huge planet. I think I'm probably making an understatement there. So when you go up, you've got no doubt the most incredible view possible in human history, okay? And there's a reason all these astronauts that go up there talk about it's life changing it just changes your world view i mean quite literally changes your world view but you are you are looking down at the entire planet or a portion of it depending on how far out you are what do you think the chances are that you do see something because dan you quite rightly said to me before we hit record and we discussed this very briefly you're, you're probably going to see a lot of satellites flying about yeah there's part part of this and kind of learning about the other buckets in the UAP report or preliminary report, I should say, um, is kind of learning what there is in the night sky. You, you know, we we always see, oh, UFOs have gone over Devon or something, and then it turns out to just be Starlink or something like that. So a big part of this is educating people. Um, but we already see how, how much people pour over the, the live streams from the ISS. So that's just going to increase as more people start going to space, you know? I, I can't imagine someone like, you, you know, we, we have satellite phones, so you could technically tweet from up there if, if you kind of had access to one. Um, and it, at some point it's going to happen. You know, the, the SpaceX rocket that's there now has kind of the biggest view of the Earth from a rocket that on, on any rocket that's ever been built, it has this big parabola so they can kind of see the whole side of the planet. Um, and if these kind of fast walkers and objects coming from, you know, above 79, 80,000 feet um, are, are super prevalent, then at some point, one of them is going to be filmed and just put up on the internet, right? Yeah. And even so forget the technology to live stream or film, okay, because that, that can be that can be delayed or fixed. But even just if you got some serious people some rich people some celebrities and again I, I talk about Kanye West because he's the kind of guy that would just come out and say something anyway if they saw something they'll come down and say they wouldn't let people gag them or or stop them from talking about any potential sightings and experiences as well so but I, just, I, I would say that we just had a conversation where where we were saying that 
famous people having sightings isn't necessarily super valid when they share those stories. They're still single data points, right? Or single source stories, I should say. I know you were going to say that when I brought that up. <laughs> well, I still we got feel... to hold ourselves to account for what we say, right? Yeah, but I suppose I'm I'm putting just personally more stock in someone standing on the ground looking up filming a reality TV show as opposed to someone going on a commercial trip into space and saying, Do you know what, I saw some stuff up there, but I, I just could not explain. I just put more stock put more stock into that, rightly or wrongly. I just think yeah. And Dan, I've got down here that we were going to talk about the secret space programs, but I think we've run out of time on this update, so we'll have to leave that one. Yeah, cool. We'll come back to it. Maybe you know maybe what? a what if episode. Yeah, I, I do want to do a show on, on some of that stuff. It's a little bit of the more out there, but I love the idea that the US and Russia and, and other countries that they have been going into space on, on different Apollo missions, you know, Apollo 13.5. And, and like there, there are different ideas of the level of that conspiracy as well. You know, it goes all the way up to Corey Good kind of going, yeah, I went to space for 20 years and they sent me back in time and my life reset to all, all the way down to the more reasonable. No, no, we just did things in secret. <laughs> yeah, which I am sure they have done. Like, absolutely sure of it. But we'll get to that at some point anyway. Folks, um, as we've mentioned, coming up then on the podcast, you can listen to the interview part two with Ross Coulthard. Uh, today, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, early access with no adverts. Um, if you sign up to patreon.com from only one dollar or from a couple of dollars the price of a coffee if you don't grudge us that if, if you can afford it it's tough times for everyone um, if not then everyone gets the same access to the podcast from monday you'll be able to hear that part too and then only a couple of days later you've got the show with ralph blumenthal and that'll be out that evening as well we'll put that straight out for everyone so no early access on that one it's not going to be too long form um but you can also check out some interviews with ralph blumenthal over the coming days on a few other platforms so um unidentified celebrity review later on today and disclosure team Vinny, um he's got ralph on as well and no doubt ralph will be popping up all over the place in the coming days so so check those out as well folks dan thanks very much for joining us thank you for having me it's been a pleasure awesome as we roll on towards the end of september and into october where we've got some more cool shows names and guests to announce coming up soon so once again folks thank you very much and we'll speak to you soon that is all for this week's show thank you very much for listening please remember to leave the podcast a review on your chosen platform you can like retweet and subscribe that would all be very much appreciated the shows are being uploaded onto youtube as we speak more and more you can sign up at patreon.com forward slash that ufo podcast to access the shows ad free as well please get in touch on twitter facebook instagram that ufo podcast of course, on Twitter, it's at UFO, U-A-P-A-M. And again, folks, as always, keep looking up. You never know what you might see. It wasn't a Tic Tac and not quite a saucer, more like a hubcap designed by Chaucer, a little Baroque and quite steampunk, like Alice was playing bass for the Parliament of Folk. The little fucker hovered right outside of my window, and when I shoved out the screen, he made it an issue. I don't think he expected me to see his ass, but I'd had some champagne and smoked a little more. Meditative game of state full on meta. I can't imagine how it could have been any better. I got to the top of the stairs and there he was. Like, you awake? I was about to abduct you, cuz. I jumped back and nearly kissed myself. And I climbed out the window after the elf. And I woke up in my bed and there was something on my head. And everything was weird and everything was red. I called up my boys. They thought this was noise. They thought it was a dream. They thought it was my toy. They thought it was my problems, and they think I should seek therapy, and I don't know what it is, because it doesn't really scare me. If you really want to know who I think they'd be, I guess you and me, and us and we, and him and her, and that and she, and that thing over there, and what's that, Jay?
Thank you.